Hello again, YouTubers. Welcome back to The Board Game Captain. I'm your host, The Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to play By Order of the Queen. Now, By Order of the Queen was published by Junk Spirit Games and was designed by David Gerard and has art by Justin Hillgrove. So now, um, the first thing I, I want to talk about is how beautiful the artwork is in this by Justin Hillgrove. Uh, it is a very cartoony style, but it is very detailed. The shading is fantastic, and it is something that really draws your eye to the game. Now, this is a, a game in a fantasy world. Uh, the game itself says the kingdom. Uh, oh, excuse me. The game itself lists itself as a two to four player cooperative fantasy RPG light board game that plays in 90 to 120 minutes. Players take on the role of a guild master of a kingdom of Tessendor. There are so many heroes wanting to help the queen that the guilds have been tasked with assigning heroes to protect the kingdom as they see fit. So now it is listed as 90 to 120 minutes for ages 10 and up for two to four players. So first off, now the ages 10 and up I feel is a bit of an underestimate for this game. Uh, because people that young at 10 years old are not going to be able to play this game without help from someone older. I would actually bring this up to maybe a 13 or 14 and up. I'm not really sure, but 10 and up feels too young to me for me for this one. The 90 to 120 minutes, um, yeah, much closer to that 120 minutes, maybe even longer depending on your number of players. Um, as for the two to four players, this game actually scales pretty well. And plays equally well at two, three, and four players because the the main thing that paces the game, which is an extra phase that happens, it happens every four turns regardless of the number of players you have. So that actually works okay. Now I'm going to have a, a quick look at some of the components. Uh, first thing I want to show you is the rule book. Now the rule book is very nice. It is full color. It's filled with lots of diagrams, including a big diagram for setup. Uh, very little in the way of ambiguities. I would say that this rulebook is, is fairly well done. It's not the best rulebook in the world, but I don't have any major complaints with it at all. It's, it's a fairly well done rulebook. Now, the board is gorgeous. Uh, let me show you this board. This board is just, it's got, the, again, the lovely artwork. It's got lots of spaces for all the different things that you need to have spaces for. The card decks, tokens, uh, Really well done board. Two thumbs up. In fact, in general, on the production of this game, two thumbs up. I'm really loving the look of it. You've got here a little sideboard for discard piles, just for discard piles. Uh, we also have some tokens here. Lots of little cardboard punch-out tokens for different things. Uh, here's some more tokens. If you've seen one token, you've seen them all in some ways. Uh, we also have uh, some nice six-sided dice. Not a whole lot to talk about there. Um, and in addition to the tokens, there are just a lot of decks of cards. Now, these are really nice cards. Um, they are um, linen finish, which I always enjoy linen finish cards. Very well done. Uh, the cards look great. And this has a really nice insert where you can separate out all the different kinds of cards and put them into their uh, separate sections within the box and be able to keep, keep them separate, which is very, very good. But uh, now all of the, the components of this game are really, really the cards. So rather than show you each of the cards from the different decks, what I'm going to do is we're just going to go to the game table and I'm going to run you through a few turns of this game and show you how it plays. And you're going to see all the cards out there. And then we're going to come back. I'm going to talk about how this game feels. I'm going to review it. I'm going to rate it. And we're going to get a second opinion from Lynn. Okay, so here you can see a two-player game of by order of the queen setup so to set up this game there's a lot of just shuffling up decks and putting the cards out uh we always start with the king's funeral for the specific number of players that we are playing and it instructs you how many bad guys to add to the row when making the bad guy deck you split it into three decks and add two big monster prompts into shuffled into two of the three decks put them two on the bottom and then one without any on top uh, the big monster, actual big monsters are placed over there next to the game board. All the different locations for going questing are near the board. The, uh, the two-player card also instructed us to, re to retire. <coughs> retire. It's really killed as a grave. But retire 12 mo uh, heroes from the top of the deck, so we did that. Uh, and it also told you how much threat to put in every area, which in this case is two in every 
area. We're all then we're then each dealt a random um, guild card. My guild card allows me to start with the impervious mantle, which is an item that I can continue to reuse and gives me uh, one of that ability with the purple word bubble there whenever I need to do a test for that. Uh, and my guild is called the o o Oromanos Consortium. Uh, and also gives me an ability if I just uh, use up to two members of my own guild that I then discard at the end of the turn, which uh, would allow me to remove a threat from the confidence of the region threat pool here. Now, what is uh, yours that you have there? Uh, I drew the Wild Skylancers. Okay. Which and gave me the Clockwork Gunblade. Which gives you an extra combat, uh, melee and ranged combat yes. when needed. And then also... Uh, what is your ability? How many do you have to get rid of for it? Uh, I can discard two of my own faction to remove a threat from the Garden Sanctuary. Mm. And now that is that is the guys you discard that you have used through the turn. You you discard them at the end of the turn. So now, uh, Lynn, why don't you just start us off? This is really now this is a co-op game, but this is a uh, hundred percent better shown than explained. So why don't we run through some turns and show them how this works? I'm going to use these four guys to attack. The dudes oh, there. okay. So you have oh, you have one of each variety. Yeah. So now with combat, you want to have a very varied party. So in Lynn's case, she has one ranged, one melee, one healer, and one defender, which means she gets four dice because she has four different varieties. She rolls four dice and she has to get equal to or higher than their numbers to cover them up and oh, possibly. I rolled five. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn can't count today, but she'll do it again and she'll do it. Again. So here we go. Okay. So she got uh, she got a six. Well, that's six. You can kill the big guy with a six and a, you've got a two over there. So you can take him out right away. And in fact, you can kill the other big guy too. So there you go. All right, so Lynn had the right uh, dice to kill the two larger guys, which thoroughly cleans out the monsters. She gets to take both of them as trophies, but there is still one little lowly monster left, which means she has to retire. <coughs> retire one of the heroes that were in her party. So which one is going to be retired? Um, let's do this guy. Okay, so he goes in the graveyard. The rest of them just go in the normal hero discard pile. Uh, she has, she was not going on a quest. She has no quest card that she's working on. So she just draws back up to a full seven card hand. So it's another four cards for you because you did use a full four cards for that. Okay, and then uh, she moves the uh, moon counter along one space. So now it is my turn to decide what to do. So uh, let's see, do I have a lot of stuff? Um, I actually do have a lot of stuff that, that has the particular ability for, for, uh, for that, but do they also have the abilities I would need for the Obsidian Waste? Now the Queen's Order uh, is to go adventuring in the Obsidian Waste uh, and try to get successes on her. So let's see now, he's really good for the Obsidian Waste. He's got the Queen's thing. He's got the Queen's ability and not bad for the Obsidian Waste. Also, he's also got the book, which is one of the things there. He's got the Queen's Order plus the chain. Um, that is actually not too bad. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to form a party and I'm going to try to do the Queen's Order. So I lay out my party members here and now the party members you can see their abilities here and what class they are and I'm going to lay all four of them out in front of me and I'm going to attempt to make a uh, adventure in the Queen's Waste. So to do so I go to the Obsidian Waste which is what she says I need to do and I have to read the first uh, of the three bars to see what I need to do. So the first one says, as the commander of the enemy forces makes his presence on the battlefield known, you know a well-timed shot could end this combat. In other words, I could assassinate the enemy commander. Now that is requiring ranged guys. I actually, by luck of the uh, total luck, I managed to, to, to include two ranged guys in my combat. See, that's the range symbol there. The range symbol is shown right there behind the dialog box. That is what I need. So for a, that is a class check. So for a class check, I get twice as many plus one of the dice I need. So I get five dice. This is actually really lucky for me. I random, random choice actually picks the right class. So all I need to succeed is a five or better. 
on one of the dice. And, ooh, I only got one, but I did get one. So I got one five. It almost was going to be a really unlucky roll. So I succeed. Yay. So now, um, for that success, I get to go to the second, um, uh, uh, the second area, which says, Only a handful of minions continue to fight on while others run. And it's a regular just combat roll. And now, for the second area, the combat roll uh, means I get one die for each class I have available. I have three classes available, so I get three dice. That's not quite as good. But again, I need a five or better. Let's see if I get it. No, I fail. Now, failing the second one means we get a plus one monster to the pool. It is what is shown there as the penalty. There was no bonus for the first one. You never get a bonus for the first one. It's just if you've succeeded it, you do the second row. If you fail at it, you do the third row. So we just add another monster out. The, sh the shadow lurking comes out onto the field there. Um, now, when you are trying to fulfill the queen's order, um, the first thing you need to do when you're is is draw and successes during this test. Always add a success token to the queen's order, uh, but do not give their normal card reward. So I did get one success for the first one. Normally I wouldn't get anything for it, but because I did get a success, I do get to place one there on the queen's order. And then I remove the card. Now I then, uh, because I completed that, I get to try a test on that blue uh, that purple word bubble ability which i brought three guys along specifically for this test i need to roll a five or better and i will get a second possible nope i rolled a two a two and a three i get nothing else and i put the queen seal over it and we don't get to try getting any successes for it again until the entire next round that did not work out quite so well so I discard all four of the cards that I used. I'm then going to draw four more cards. And I am going to the move the moon up. And now it is Lynn's turn. Uh, well, I guess since I can't try the queen's order, I will hunt the goblins again, whatever is over there. Well, okay. Uh, it's four. I have four mm -hmm. this time. <laughs> You only need a four and anything else, okay. and you're good. Yeah. All right, so Lynn manages to clear out all of the monsters that were left, which means none of her guys get retired. They just get discarded, uh, and that's it for her round. I'm going to decide to go questing, so I'm going to draw the top quest card. I get to draw two and pick one. Let's see, uh, two Silver Coast or two Obsidian Waste. Let's see what I've got. Lots of... Uh, I'm going to go to the two Silver Coasts. So I'm going to discard the other quest. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now go questing in the Silver Coast. So I draw the top card from the Silver Coast. Oh, excuse me. Before I do, I have to make my party, which I need red, green, and purple. Let's see. So he's got red and green. Green and purple. Purple might be good there, and they are different classes. Um, let's see. I've got a melee guy that has green and a melee guy that has red. I don't have any red yet. I'm going to take the one that has the red. And then I don't have any ranged guys out there. I've got a ranged guy here with green and purple. So there we go. I have made a party for different types, so hopefully this will do well. Let's see what happens. So we flip it up, and the first one needs a healer check i i uh it's listed right there it says the cries of the fallen warriors call out from the battlefield some have minor injuries and some are severe you find a small abandoned tent and set up a triage station to heal the wounded as best you can now i only brought one healer uh, with me because i was worried about needing a fight so i brought one of each type and instead i wound up with a healer test so i get the number of that class which i have one Times two, so I get two plus one. So I get three dice total. I need to get a five or better. Hopefully it's better than my last roll. And I did. I rolled a six and a five, so I am good. So I succeed at that, but I get nothing. There is no reward for that, so I just go on to the second one. Now the second run is, says, 
The red mains you have saved are thankful for your help. The leaders ask your group to speak to the enemy to negotiate a peace treaty. This war cannot be allowed to continue. Now, this requires a mind stat, which I've only brought one guy with. As you can see, this guy has no of the mind, which is the little uh, blue brain symbol. This guy has none of the mind. This guy has none of the mind. And this guy has only one of the mind. Now, on the backs of these, uh, on the backs of the cards, the ones you go questing on, and this is something I want to draw a little attention to, they do show you what are the most common skills there. But as you can see, the mind is not one of the ones that is listed there. So I didn't know I needed that, but apparently I did. And I brought one guy with it, which means I get one die and I need a five or better. I got lucky and I succeeded. So there we go. Now that gives me the little moon symbol as my reward, which is whatever the reward is shown here, which is I gain an item. So that's actually not bad at all. So I'm going to get an item. I gained the swift shoulder guards, which I can discard to give me that chain symbol once if I want. So the rest of these guys, uh, now that is my first silver coast. I need one more to complete this quest, but I will discard the rest of my guys here. I will draw back up to a full seven, so I get four more cards. One, two, three, four. Um, those guys I discarded, there were not two of my, my uh, uh, guild, so I do not get my guild ability. And then um, that's it for my turn. So now this was the fourth turn, which means we go back to turn one, but we have to do a event phase. Now the event phase is a little different. It happens once every four rounds. So first, if there's a nemesis out, we would do the nemesis ability. Luckily, there's no nemesis out. Then we remove a villager for each bad guy monster out, but Lynn has cleaned those guys away so we don't remove any. Then we spawn monsters based on the threat level in the growing enemy. There's two, so we spawn two more monsters. Uh, not too bad. Then we, uh, what we do is we check to see uh, if, if there were more than six monsters in play, if there were six already, extra ones would kill villagers. Um, then we remove regions based on the region threats. We remove two region tokens. So that's becoming a problem already. And then we retire two heroes from the top of the deck because we have two threat over there. So two more cards get removed that we cannot use. When this deck runs out, the stuff in the discard gets shuffled back in, but the retired guys are permanently gone unless we play an effect that can bring some back in, which those sort of effects are few and far between. Then we get to remove the seal from the queen's order so that we will be able to try to go for it again. But you do need to wind up with eight or more success tokens on the queen's order in, edder, in order to remove that queen's order and get another one. And you need to complete three queen's orders to win the game. Now, of those eight, we only managed to get one because I only succeeded at one of the uh, two possible, uh, excuse me, the three possible tests that I could take during uh, that queen order there. I got unlucky on one of the rolls. The next thing we can do is turn in monster trophies. Lynn has collected four, so she may turn in uh, and discard all four of those monster trophies in order to get uh, in, into the monster discard here, in order to get one of the queen's uh, favor tokens, which are a little rare. And what you do with them is you may discard one of them to re-roll one die once. Uh, then after that, we're going to draw a new event card. The new event card is open trade, and we do what the new event card says. So the growing enemy gets a uh, another token for the growing enemy here, which means it becomes even more dangerous. Uh, so I'm going to put one on there. We get two on the, the threat for the region confidence, which is getting even more dangerous and is uh, going to be speeding us along to defeat here already. And we get another one on the uh, garden sanctuary down there. Uh, after that, the effect for the round is we get plus one dice on charisma tests during this turn. So there's one little uh, silver lining there. That plus one die on charisma tests is pretty nice. But now in the future, we're going to really have to pay attention to these. These can go up to a maximum of six. There are cards and quests that might, as a reward, allow you to get rid of some of them. For instance, the quests I'm working on here, as a reward, I can remove three threat tokens from any pool. And this is going to be very important because we've got four threat tokens over here in the confidence of the region, which started out at 11 and has already lost two of their tokens. If we ever run out of either heroes in the deck, 
or tokens in either of these areas, we lose the game. And again, to win the game, we must complete three Queen's orders. So that's it. That's how you play a game of by order of the Queen. So now we're going to head back to the table and we're going to talk about how this game feels. I'm going to review it and rate it and we're going to get a second opinion from Len. Okay, so welcome back. That was how you play a game of by order of the Queen. Now I feel I need, absolutely need to address two, not one, but two elephants in the room. So elephant number one is the false advertising on the back of the box. So the game claims to be an RPG light, and it's really not. I mean, the characters are just cards that you use as a resource. You throw them down in different combinations in a little bit of a hand management set collection type uh, mechanic to be able to decide how many dice you're then going to roll. And it is not an RPG light at all. You don't hold on to those heroes. Any hero, heroes, uh, heroes either get removed from the game or just discarded, and then you draw more heroes. This is there is no real role playing aspect to this game. This is not an RPG light. This is not an RPG at all. So that's the first thing I need to draw attention to. The second thing is, um, as much as I like the artwork, and I really do, I think the artwork and the production is top notch on this game. Um, those are the two things I like the most is the artwork and the production. However, this game feels a little mismarketed to me. The artwork would have you believe that this is a family weight game. And it's not. This is not a kid's game. This is this game is is brutal and difficult in ways that would really frustrate younger players. So I feel like they should have gone with a more vicious and adult theme with it because it, it feels mismarketed. It feels like they missed the mark. Someone might buy this to play it with their kids and then be really frustrated and be like, well, why, why does it look like it's a kid's game? And why does it say for ages 10 and up, which really does not fit the style of this game. So, all right. Now let's talk about how the game feels. So the game feels like you're, you're managing your hand and you're trying to collect the right combinations of cards and equipment to be able to go on quests and to, to succeed at, at, at dice rolls, hopefully. Uh, sometimes you can use those very valuable and rare to get uh, uh, Queen's Favors to re-roll dice and do a little, a little bit of a press your luck element, but not really, because those are very rare and the game is actually rather stingy with those uh, Queen, uh, Queen's Favor tokens. But the, 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 big, uh, the big mechanic of the game is going to a location, whether you're doing it for a quest that you're trying to complete or you're doing it for a uh, queen's order, you're going to the location and trying to win there. Now, the location shows you what skills you're going to need most often in that location. But I got to tell you, there's three possible uh, areas you're going to you're going to uh, try to pass tests on when you go to a location. Um, and the thing is. The first one is mandatory, and depending on whether you succeed or fail, you go to either the second one or the third one. If you fail, you go to the third one. And the first one, even if you succeed, gives you no benefit unless it's for the, you know, for the Queen's Order, in which case you succeed so you get a token on the Queen's Order. Um, if you, and then you, uh, but usually for a quest, you would just succeed and go to the second paragraph and try again there. And the thing is, while they show the most common skills that are used in here, the minimum number of the three paragraphs on the card that have to be one of these skills is one. There are a lot of cards that only have one of these skills on there. And there are zero of these cards that have all three of them on there. So you never find one where all three of them are one of these. Now, usually when it's only one, at least one of the other types uh, on the card might be either a class uh, test or a combat role. And in those cases, you always get at least one die because... For a class test, you get a die, uh, you get two dice for each character card of that class you played plus one. So even if you didn't play any of that class, which can happen sometimes when you don't get it in your hand, you would at least get one die. But that die only has a one-third chance of succeeding. 
And if you do a combat roll, well, you're you're you get one for each each class of character in your party. So you usually will get on average two to four dice to roll there. But again, each one only has a one third chance of success. So this game has a huge amount of randomness. First off, you have the randomness of all the decks of cards, and there's a lot of decks of cards. And then you have the randomness of the dice roll. So even if you get a lot of dice, you can get a poor roll and roll all ones. And if you don't have any of those those queen's favor tokens, you can't even re-roll them. And even if you do have those queen's favor tokens, all it is is one re-roll. If you roll a one again, it's still, that's it. Um, this game is too much randomness there is there are um there's been quite a few times while trying to play this game where we're doing well and we get destroyed because of one turn of super random bad events rolling lots of no ro low numbers rolling um drawing the worst cards and then rolling low numbers when trying to defeat those cards um and getting literally zero uh tokens on the one chance you get to try to get tokens on the queen's order for that round. And the needing eight tokens to complete a queen's order and then needing to complete three queen's orders is just too many, too much. Um, it makes this game very punishing and it feels like it's punishing you through new, no fault of your own because a lot of times it happens literally because of the roll of the dice and the draw of the many decks. I personally would have made this game better in my opinion by removing quite a bit of randomness i think that a lot of times when you're having a skill check if you have the relevant skill you should auto pass and if you if you don't have the relevant skill then you get a chance to roll for it and see if you can still pass that that would be much better in my opinion but the way it is now with this game it's just and it makes me very sad to say it because I love the look of this game. I love the artwork. I love the production design. I think it's it's fantastic. But the game itself feels frustrating. I can, I can tell you that, that that's the key word for me here on this one. There are... There, I, I cannot tell you that for 100% that you will certainly have fun playing this game. You may have fun playing this game. It's possible. But I can tell you for sure that if you play this game at least twice you're going to be frustrated while playing this game. And a game shouldn't be fun, shouldn't be that frustrating. A game should be fun. A game should be escape from the frustrations of life. It should be an enjoyable experience. And I I can't say that about this game. I really can't. And it makes me sad because I love the look of this game and I really wanted to like this game. So at this point, I can't really recommend this game to anyone other than someone who wants to rework the rules themselves and maybe figure out a way to make it better maybe someone who wants to to someone who is a budding game designer and, and wants to come up with uh improvements to this game but i myself do not think this game is going to last in my game collection and for all of these reasons i give this game a four out of ten stars now four out of ten stars means i don't like this game very much but I could be convinced to play it in the future now i don't think i'm going to hold on to mine but if i met someone who said oh I, I totally disagree with you on this game. I really like it, and I can show you how to win it. I might play a game with them. Maybe, if the mood struck me. But I myself don't really like this game, and that's why I'm giving it 4 out of 10 stars. But, differing opinions do matter. So let's get a second opinion from Lynn. Lynn, how many stars out of 10 would you give to By Order of the Queen? Three. So that's even lower than mine. Now, I've talked with Lynn about this, and I've t I told her, I said, you know, I'm, I might see myself playing this if someone else really, really liked it on a game night. And Lynn said, no. She said, I will never play this game again, and I'm very uh, disappointed in it and in my purchase to buy. Because it was Lynn's buy. This one was Lynn's purchase. And she was very excited for it. Now, uh, and, and her reasons are very similar to mine. The big, the big things are first... The, the first of the two elephants in the room, the fact that th this is a thorough um, a thorough bait and switch, because this is not an RPG light at all. The, uh, they should not have put that on the box. It's a lie. There's no two buts about it. Um, and also the fact that it's so random and can be so frustrating and so punishing, regardless of your strategy. You can do everything right and the game can still walk up and punch you in the face and say, no. 
you get nothing because your dice all rolled once. And because you drew the wrong cards at the wrong time, which is no fault of yours. So there you have it. Four stars from me, three stars from Len. Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns either on the game by order of the queen or this video? Feel free to put them in the comments down below. If you have played by order of the queen and think we're really off, if you think you really enjoyed this game and maybe we did something wrong, um, feel free to comment down below. Uh, and if you enjoyed this review and tutorial and would like to see us do more like it, be sure to give it a like, share this video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game on.